Hey everyone, this is Zoraz, not casuals, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about artifacts in Genshin Impact. I'm going to go over all of the questions we've been receiving recently in our live stream, asking us which kind of artifact is better, on what character does this artifact set goes, which set should I go for, and where do I get more artifacts? So I'm going to be answering all of these questions in this video, as well as I'm going to be giving you some really important tips on how to get more material and how to refine your artifacts properly and where to focus your time when you're getting new artifacts. Now, when we're talking about artifacts, there's a few things that are very important to know. First, I want to put a mention on the attribute of each artifact. What I mean by that is if you go around, you'll see that this up here always has a different attribute. Now, this is the most important statistic of your artifact. At the beginning, at level 0, it has a small percentage, but you see that at level 16, it is a huge percentage, and this is what makes the brunt of your actual stats. Now, it is important that you focus on the statistic here that will benefit the character that you're playing the most. It is very important in the early game that you try and equip your characters with artifacts that provide them the right attributes over having some weird set bonuses that might not be that good and having bad statistic on those items specifically. Now, what I mean by that is if we go, for example, look at Barbara, which is a character that everybody can have for free right now. If you look at her talents in her ult, you will see that her ult heals based on her max HP. So when you're looking at artifacts for Barbara, you're going to try and have items that have HP here, HP, and HP here. Now, this is what I mean by that. Some characters will have attack, some characters will have elemental mastery, some characters will have HP, or in the case of Noel, for example, you want defense because her abilities scale off defense. So now, that's my first tip that's very important when you're getting this game and you're playing in the early game. You really want to have artifact sets that will give you the statistic here that you want on that character. So go read your attributes, go read your abilities, and make sure that you're equipping items that give what you need. Now, if we go into set bonuses, of course, there are a lot of sets here. In the beginning, you'll have Adventurer, Lucky Dog, Traveling Doctor, which is good for healing, but none of these sets really give huge bonuses. So it's fine if your sets are broken and you don't have a four-piece or a two-piece, and instead you have artifacts that give the right attributes. Now, you'll have these sets like Berserker, for example, which gives crit rate and does more damage when you can crit. Now, these sets are starting to be pretty good for some characters, but again, only if you can get the right attributes like for example this like this is bad defense doesn't do anything on someone like diluc it's not a great item so i wouldn't use this much rather use an item that gives attack which is what i want early game instead of giving this so this is really what i would say focus on now as you grow later on in the game you'll unlock more and more set that give more and more damage so this is going to be more specific and we will make specific guides on item sets as well as most of our character guides on our channel will have a recommendation on the sets that are good for certain characters. But in the early game, you'll basically just try and use your common sense and get what's best because you won't have as many choices. There will be a lot of Berserker, a lot of martial artists, and you will have eventually some good instructor, which is good for elemental mastery characters. And you will try your best to make set bonuses while giving the right stat to the character. Now, something else that's very important about artifacts is that you must know when you are braiding, their secondary attribute will get randomized and will go up. Now, what I mean by that is like, as you see here, I have a level zero flower that has a certain amount of HP and some crit and defense. Now, the same kind of flower here, level four, has one more attribute here. What that means is that every time you reach a threshold of four, you will get a bonus attribute given to the item. Now, what that means is that when you're equipping and enhancing artifacts, you want to go in thresholds of four. So if you want to bring all your artifacts on one character to four or eight or 12, not four and then six and then seven and then three, those don't, it's either four or nothing. You see, it's zero, four or eight. Now, again, I have a four attribute. So this is really how you must be doing your artifacts. Try and tr like, prioritize getting thresholds of four. You won't be able to enhance everything because it will cost you a lot of other artifacts or more. So you will be able to select a few. And that brings me to my next point. When you are enhancing artifacts, try and focus on a character or two 
which you will try and enhance the artifact to the max. For example, your main damage dealer, which is usually a character that has a high attack damage from his basic attacks, someone like Diluc, for example, or Xiangling, or there's quite a few of them that do this. Now, in this case, you see that he is equipped with only level 16 items. Now, I'm a bit later into the game, but still, I don't have that many items that are 16 otherwise in my inventory because it's expensive. So focus on one character. Now, my Diluc is so strong that he can kill most of the content by himself while being supported by my party. So I have one character with 16 and one with 8, and that is carrying me pretty well into this game. Now, for the early game, as I said, it's very important that you try and just focus on the right stat and getting some of the set bonuses if you can. That will boost your character in specific. Now, as you get further and further into the game and you unlock more sets, which you'll be able to get specific artifact for that set, you will try and farm these artifacts and then roll the right secondary stat. But that's something that you'll be focusing on solely in the later of the game. That means AR 30, 35, and even 40 plus is when you really will start doing that. So for the early game, as a recap, really focus on few artifacts that have the right stat and boost them up on your main character so that your main character is stronger than others and will basically bring you more of a value. And it is perfectly fine if you increase blue artifacts to level 12 because you can then feed that level 12 artifact into another purple artifact later on to give back most of what you've spent and recuperate that XP into a new artifact. Now, one last thing I want to mention here is that the flowers are always going to be giving you HP, no matter what. And the feather is always going to give you attack, no matter what. Now, the feather has a base attack. This is flat attack, not a percentage. And this is probably the single biggest source of damage that you can give to your character. Now, I recommend that your main attack damage dealers, guys, have the best feather you have and upgrade that feather as high as possible early on to give you the biggest boost possible. Now, when you have enough items to be able to make sets out of these really good artifacts, then you can try and focus on making sets. But that will come, as I said, quite later into the game. Now, next, I want to talk about where do you get the artifacts. Of course, everybody wants to know where they get certain artifacts. Now, the biggest and single most source of artifact will probably be chests that you discover in the open world. Of course, you'll go around, kill monsters, they'll drop a chest. You open the chest, there'll be a few artifacts dropping. Sometimes they'll be better than others. Most of the time, it'll be... Uh, low quality and then you'll be using those to enhance your other artifacts now if you go around your map you will also see that if you click on some of these bosses for example they have a chance of dropping some of these artifacts now when you look at this here you will see that it says the set includes all of this so this means that this set entirely drops here so you can get not only just the flower you can get any item of that set for each one of these sets you can get the purple version or the blue version, or if you're lucky, the orange version. And this is all the sets that can drop here specifically. You can also go and check Storm Terror, which also has its own items and he has different sets, for example. And this is going to be what he drops. And you can do this once a week to get these. As your world level increases, these will also increase in rarity and quality. As you see at level 2 here, I can do uh, orange items sometimes. And here at level 35, I will be able to get more orange and more purple. And you can see so on and so on, where orange becomes more and more easy to achieve. Now, another way to get some really good artifacts will be if you look here and you click domain only, this will tell you what the domains drop. Now, there is one that are specifically for artifact, and that is going to be the source of your late game artifacts mostly. Now, I do not recommend farming these at the beginning of the game. In the early game, you'll just take what you get, what things drop from quest, from adventure rank, or from chest. You'll just get what is there and you'll take it and do the best you can with that. Now, when you reach higher adventure ranks, you will try and look specifically for certain artifacts. So if you go here, you'll see that this one drops the electro damage set bonus and as well as this one, Electro Resistance, and this one, which is Sojourner. Now, this is going to be the source of these items all the way up to here when you'll get the orange version of these sets. Now, if you are building an Electro character that needs this set, you'll be farming this specifically over and over to drop a certain set of item, which is the one you want, and hope that it itemizes and rolls well, and you'll keep doing it until you get all the items you need. Now, don't do this early game because it's not worth the resin. It's going to be wasted because as you get level 35, 40, you'll have a chance of getting the orange version of that item. And if you spend all your resin early game on getting the purple version or even the blue version, and then you don't have a lot of resin late game to spend on getting the orange one, it'll take you longer to get these. Now, these are scattered all around the world. There is one here. There is one here. 
Now, the one that I'm at here drops the uh, Flava Walker as well as the Chrisman Witch, which is the set that I'm using on Diluc. So I've done this dungeon a few times now in order to get my set. And you see that this one has different set bonuses. Blasting Chivalry is here. Uh, Noblesse Oblige is here. If you go down here, you'll also see that there's another one. So this one has the Geo set bonus here. So they all have their sets and they all drop from these specific places where you can go over and over and farm them. And that is how you're going to acquire late game items and late game sets. Now, as I said, in the early game, it is not recommended to do this. Just by doing normal content around the world, opening chests, doing these kind of like objectives, you will find enough artifacts to gear yourself. And like I said, the set bonuses won't matter as much. It's not worth spending resin on this. It's still worth to do your weekly boss and your daily use of resin, but don't go overboard trying to farm these items because the value will not be there until later on. Now, one other source of artifacts will be when you farm ascension material, for example, the hydro ascension material here, or if you go down here, you have the fire boss that drops the fire ascension material. Now, when you farm these boss for these materials specifically, they also have a chance of dropping some items, which is usually very ones, good ones. So gladiator is a very good set, as so is this one. So you'll see that when you farm these, and this is why you should be farming them when you're ascending your characters, you'll need a large amount of these items early on to ascend these characters. So it is okay to use your resin farming these when you know you're going to need them for a character, and that is going to be another source of some of these great artifacts. Now, go around and try and get enough material to ascend all your characters, and through that, you will be getting also a very decent amount of artifacts until you reach the later levels of the game where you're going to be farming the orange and high-end tier items specifically. Now, one last source of artifacts that is often overlooked is going to be the Adventurer's Book. You see that you get, get a lot of artifacts here from just the rewards of the quests, and you see that every chapter had a lot of these artifacts, so you can get some really good sets through here, and these will be very important to get and to pay attention to. Now, you also see that if you go into the bosses here, some of these don't cost resin and you can farm them every day. Now, if you look, some of them actually have an artifact. Now, they're usually blue quality items, sure, but these are going to be very useful because they don't cost anything to do. So you can go and farm these guys over and over until they don't have any left. And you can go to the next one and then the next one. And they all will have some different artifacts that can or might or will drop from them. So this is something you can do over and over because you will need this ascension material, you'll get some more, and you'll get some artifacts that you can then feed into your other artifacts for completely free. Now, in that same term, I want to say that also, if you want to get more of these blue and white and green quality artifacts in order to feed them into your other artifacts, because you'll eventually run out, and then you'll have to farm them so that you can boost your items to level 16 and 20. Now, as well as doing all of this stuff in the Adventurer's Book that is very good for that free artifact, you also have vendors in the cities that sell artifacts every few days, including the blacksmith that sells weapons every few days, and you can go and buy those and stack up on them in order to have a lot of those in order to feed your items. Now, we have a video on our channel that I will put in the description, so just make sure to check that out if you really want to know what they are, because it is a very important information and can get a lot of value for free. One last thing that I want to mention as well is that there are going to be some ways of getting some really good 5-star artifact other than the Adventurer's Book. You also get a special 5-star artifact when you've got all the Geoculus in the second zone and you can turn them in and then there's going to be a quest that you have to go and beat some boss and it will give you a free 5-star artifact. There's also a video on our channel where we show where you can get some really easy 4-star artifacts at level 1. There's going to be some in the cathedral here, there's also a chest on top of the cathedral, and there's a person you can talk into the cathedral that will give you a force artifact right away. There's also a quest here that gives you a force artifact, and there's also some stuff in Liyu that also gives you some free force artifact. So make sure to check out this video as well in order to get yourself some free force artifacts right away at the beginning to help you progress. So guys, that's about it for my video. Of course, as I said, there is a lot of stuff to know about artifacts and there's many ways of working, but I really want you to focus on getting the artifacts that will boost your character early on and not fuss too much about the set bonuses. When you can build a set that has the right stats, then do so. Make sure to focus your main character's artifact to have the biggest increase in power and damage. It will really help you in the long run. When you're later on into the game and you are ready to farm your late game artifacts, then try and make sure to use the dungeon that you need your set for because that is where you're going to be getting most of your artifacts from. Make sure to check out our other videos on our channel, which let you know how to get some free force artifact as well as all the character guides that we have 
the characters where we will go more in depth about which characters can get which artifact set and some recommendation on how to build them. Really appreciate the community lately. Everybody has been so active. We stream every day, so we're really happy to see you guys join us there. Thank you guys for supporting us, subscribing and liking. It really helps the channel out and it is really making us have a really fun time making more content for you guys. Thank you for watching and we'll see you guys next time.